I study error correcting codes. And in this short video, I'm going to explain what they are and why we need them. As you're watching this video, its contents are being read from a hard drive somewhere in one of YouTube's data centers, then converted into an electromagnetic wave and sent over a network of cables and routers, then probably over the air, either via Wi-Fi or a mobile internet connection to your device. The point is that every stage of that process is not perfect and is associated with noise and interference. Data storage is not perfect. Data deteriorates over time. Reading and writing is not perfect. Hard drives break. Then the electromagnetic wave as it travels is getting intermixed with other sources of uh, waves and so on. So the central question of error correcting coding is how to ensure reliable transmission over those unreliable channels. And the central idea is to introduce some redundancy to the transmitted data and then to exploit that redundancy at the receiver side to reconstruct the transmitted message, the corrupted part of it. Imagine the following situation. Imagine you are sitting at a party uh, with a friend trying to chat, but it's so loud that you can't really hear everything they're saying amid all the babble. Still, you probably can guess some of the words that you misheard and didn't hear. How? Well, you probably rely on your knowledge of the words that you did hear, together with the, the rules of language and your understanding of uh, the general context, to reconstruct the speech. In other words, you are exploiting the inherent redundancy of language to be able to do that. If any sequence of sounds had been equally possible, you wouldn't have been able to guess which one of them uh, was actually said. A similar principle lies at the heart of error correcting coding. The set of possible messages is restricted according to a set of rules. The rule book is known at both the transmitter and the receiver end. That's why, by the way, we need communication standards such as Wi-Fi or 5G. The transmitter and the receiver must speak the same language. Then the receiver uses its knowledge of the rules to reconstruct the corrupted part of the message. The more rules in that rule book, the fewer messages will satisfy them all. So the less information we will manage to transmit over that uh, system. So the greater the redundancy in transmission. But on the other hand, on the bright side, of course, the more rules in the rule book, the more material the uh, receiver has to work with. And the likelier it is that the receiver will manage to reconstruct the message. So the greater uh, the receiver's resilience to noise. In other words, there is a, this fundamental trade-off between transmission redundancy and the, system, the system's error correcting capability and resilience to noise. Let's pick a specific toy communication system as an example. Imagine that the transmitter encodes information in one of the fully solved Sudoku puzzles. Imagine that the channel is introducing noise in the form of erasures. So it erases some of the cells in that Sudoku then the task of the receiver is to basically solve the Sudoku and reconstruct the transmitted fully solved Sudoku. 
a similar kind of puzzle solving is happening as you're watching this video on your device as well as at every stage along that data pipeline that we talked about up to the very hard drive where the data is stored. Now, the good news for communication system designers is that they are not constrained in their choice by the rules of language or Sudoku. They can pick any rule book that their must messages must satisfy. The bad news is that making that choice is not easy. The optimal choice depends not only on the nature and noisiness of the channel, but also on system requirements in terms of its memory, latency and energy efficiency budgets. So it is in making that choice where the art and science of coding theory begin. My research is concerned with providing analytical tools for system designers to help them make that choice. I am developing ways to predict how well a communication system will perform, how resilient it is to noise, as a function of system parameters. The code designers, the system designers, will use those tools uh, to optimize the system. Without such tools, what they have to do is to resort to numerical simulations, a kind of numerical experiment, to try and see how well a system behaves. So, the goal of my research is to simplify the task of system designers uh, and simplify the process of finding the optimal rulebook.